Okay. Thank you for joining another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I am Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello John. Hello. hello, hello. So today we are going to do an interview with Keith Alba. Um, and John, you want to give us a little bit of background on how we got in contact with Keith? Yeah, so I got I, actually my sister. Um, she she actually uh, got us in contact, and it was around about we were talking about possibly starting a blog, and then we started uh, Facebook messaging each other with my sister in a big uh, group chat, as they say, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, pretty soon, I was like, "Hey, you know what? I, I'd rather just have you on the podcast, and we could just talk about it all live." Because I think Keith, you've got a fantastic story. So, yeah, uh, so, yeah. So why don't you go ahead and give us a little background of, uh, kind of maybe what your struggle was and then why you started to kind of maybe look at changing your health, uh, sorry, changing what you're going to eat to kind of benefit your health. Okay. Well, um, I kind of got a backtrack about 18 years then. So everybody <laughs> has, has a little bit of background on me. Um, just 18? That's all? <laughs> yeah, just 18, really. I, I don't want to go back to birth. but um, So 18 years ago, I enlisted in the Army, and I've served uh, diligently for the last 18 years, um, mostly as an infantryman. Um, I have also have uh, admin services, so human resources as a secondary MOS, um, MOS being military occupational specialty. And uh, so I've, I've served this entire time been doing my my physical fitness and um all of that kind of stuff that's entailed with life in the military right and uh back in february i was trying to commission to become an officer and had to go through what they call a chapter two physical which is um you go through basically like you're a new recruit trying to make sure you meet all the medical requirements to continue in the commissioning process to become an officer. And during so that, just, just physical, for us who aren't, um, I guess, military minded, yeah. uh, when you're saying an officer is like, what, from a kind of right chain now, command thing. Yeah. Right now I am what's called a non-commissioned officer, uh, a sergeant. Uh, actually my rank is staff sergeant. Um, officers are, uh, the commanding elements of the military. So like lieutenants, captains, colonels, majors, those are the officer ranks. So if you go enlist in the military, you start off uh, lower enlisted, the private specialist, that sort of thing. And you move up the chain on the NCO side. If you continue your career, your non-commissioned officer side. So your sergeants, your sergeant or first sergeants, your sergeant majors. Um, to move to the command side, the officer side, you have to go through a course called OCS, Officer uh, Commissioning Service. Yeah, OCS. And um, and then after that course, which for federal side is, I think, eight weeks, but going through the National Guard, it would have been an 18-month process where I do it on weekends and get done that way. Um, so I was like six months into that 18 month process when I found out I was diagnosed type two diabetic. <clears throat> and, so, um, once you're diagnosed ahead. with that, then what's that mean? Did they like tell you can't go into that, that, that rank or how's that work? It put things on hold for me. Um, they, there's, uh, standards throughout the military on various things. And one of them being, a diagnosis diagnosis of type two, um, they ha you have to have an A1C under seven point zero, and you cannot be on any medication at all, or you will be put in front of a medical board and possibly, possibly, if that medical board reviews you and thinks you're not able to serve, possibly discharged for that diagnosis. So it put it put the whole commissioning into the officer program on hold for me. And I had to focus on my health, which looking at me back in February, um, you really wouldn't think I was an unhealthy guy. I mean, I'm six feet tall. Uh, then I weighed at like 225, 230. And I've always been into like weightlifting and um, I'm a CrossFit instructor. Uh, I've done competitions for CrossFit and stuff. So I, I didn't. I didn't think I was horribly unhealthy in any way, shape or form. So I was completely shocked by the diagnosis and 
also doing some research, I found absolutely no history medically on my on either side of my family that had any such diagnosis as well. So caught me off guard. Um, so if somebody was looking at you, they, there's no way they would have guessed that no, you I, have type 2 diabetes. Actually, I when I started seeing endocrinology after my diagnosis, both the endocrinologist and the nutritionist that I was seeing were completely surprised that I was diagnosed. They saw me, they come in and they're like, I, you do not fit the bill for a typical type 2 diabetic. And we could tell you to lose weight, but we don't think it's going to do anything for you. <laughs> Wow, that's kind of crazy. So, so when they put that on hold, then what 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 did you end up doing? Obviously, if you're going to them and they're telling you you can't lose weight, it's probably not going to help you. You don't have the weight to lose. So, did they give you any advice about what you should do? Um, they immediately put me on uh, metformin, um, two five hundred milligram tablets a day, and because of that, being on a medication, I was on the process to um, face a medical board to discharge me from the military, potentially discharge me from the military. Um, but from the time of diagnosis, you have one year to get your A1C under control and get off the medication before you actually face that medical board. So being diagnosed middle of February of 2017, I had until middle of February of next year to get everything out of control. And, um, at the time of diagnosis, my A1C is 9.1. Um, wow. so yeah, I, I would have never thought, I mean, I hadn't been tested for any of that stuff before my life. So it just, like I said, it caught me off guard. So for somebody who has no idea, cause I have no idea is so what, what is the average um, average A1C for an American, a healthy American, not diagnosed with diabetes is between a 4.5 and a 6.5, which A1C, for those who don't know, is your glucose levels in your blood over a three month average. Yeah. And Jolene, you've got yours back down to, what did you tell? I think you actually announced it on the last podcast, right? Yeah. So, well, and I'll, I'll reveal my new one. I find out, uh, next week, but the last one that I had was at 5.2. That's, the highest yeah, that's that awesome. mine's ever been was 7.8. So nine is, nine's high. Yeah. Yeah. Super high. Um, so yeah, like I said, I, I was at 9.1 and they immediately put me on metformin and to try to bring my numbers down. I actually found out I was diagnosed diabetic because Walgreens called me saying I had a prescription to pick up and I didn't get a phone call from my doctor until the next morning at like 8 a.m. So you, um, you got your wow. prescription notice before your... Before my doctor told me of my diagnosis, yeah. Wow. Well, they were, they obviously <laughs> thought it was a problem. Yeah, they did. They, they called in. She, uh, she got the results while she was at home after hours and she called in immediately and I was... I looked at my text message from Walgreens and I was like, what, what is metformin? And my wife was, she, uh, she had PCOS, um, and she was on it in high school to help regulate her PCOS. And she's like, that's a diabetic medication. So as I was driving to my doctor's office the next morning, she actually called me and said, so was like, uh, I got bad news. <laughs> um, so yeah, 9.1, super high. Um, especially when I had no symptoms of diabetes at all. I wasn't excessively urinating. I didn't have like, um, a over, I wasn't overly thirsty. Um, I didn't have sweet breath, sweet smelling breath. Like all the questions my doctor asked me. And then later my endocrinologist, I had none of those symptoms. So, I mean, potentially without me going through the OCS program and finding out through their testing process, I mean, potentially it could have been a huge health hazard down the road because I would have never known. And I'm assuming that up to this point, you thought you ate fairly healthy and you were, oh, yes. sounded pretty athletic. Yeah. Um, I, I did paleo for a number of years and I, I mean, everybody has their cheat days, but I was not somebody who would go out and eat a whole pizza I mean, maybe back when I was in college in my early 20s, I ate that way. But for the last at least decade, I ate fairly healthy. Wow. 
Um, so, yeah, uh, after I got diagnosed and they immediately put me on the medication, I went and talked with uh, our medical staff for the National Guard. And they're like, okay, you need to get this under control. Um, if you don't have, or if you're not off the medication, and under a 7.0 by um, February of next year, February of 2018, we're going to have to put you in front of a med board and they may discharge you. So that was my initial motivation to try to get a handle on things and bring everything down was the fact that I could face losing my career over this. Um, so you I mentioned did. paleo. Oh, yeah. So you, so you mentioned paleo. So, so you're, you're, you're kind of seeing, you, you know, you're, you got this huge problem in front of you and you're trying to tackle it. So you had tried paleo before. Uh, I was a very much paleo eater from me first getting certified as a CrossFit instructor back in 2012. So gotcha. pretty much from then on, and except for an occasional pizza with the wife and right. kid or something like that, I was right. pretty much paleo. So then what, so what did you change then? So, cause you're, cause you're kind of hitting this place where you're like, wow, I thought I was eating healthy. Now I'm going to change. So what did, what did you look into? And then what'd you end up picking? Well, I looked into a lot of things, but it really came down to tracking my macros. Um, it turned out, I mean, I didn't know about keto at that time, but it turned out that if I kept my numbers, like my carb intake below 50 grams a day, then my numbers stayed low. Like my morning, uh, um, shoot, I forget what it's called. Fasting glucose was in the nineties. And after a meal, I'd be in the one twenties as opposed to prior to that, if I was above that 50 gram number, I would be like in the one seventies after I ate or one eighties after I ate. And which, I mean, those numbers equate to like seven, seven to eight, two, a one C where the, 90s to 120s you're talking a 5.5 five to a 6 a1c so so for you what would you say your since you're a macros guy what would you say your ratio is because keto's up you know there's different opinions on net carbs versus everything so what, what did you end up landing for your body well, the, hold well, on let me bring up my fitness pal and sh oh wow yeah, you're you're the exact numbers yeah, <laughs> well <laughs> Because I mean, I'm, it's kind of become my life now is tracking these these things. So, um, sorry, yeah, I have to let it load a little bit. <laughs> that's okay. So just just uh, why you're why that's loading, I'll just go ahead and tell you that I I never really was solid paleo. I mean, I, I, I dabbled in it, but I really went more primal. I got primal blueprint certified, and then later um, in kind of doing more kind of tweaking with my body found out that I felt better when I had a, a little bit lower carb ratio. And then I found I was in the 50 below 50, um, you know, in the carb curve because Primal Blueprint has a carb curve and we've talked about that before, but that just kind of gives me an understanding of where you are just since I don't track macros as much. Um, I kind of do it by how I feel. Um, yeah. So uh, I just, but uh, so what did you end up did the, um, for yesterday, my carb intake was 30 grams, my fat intake was 118, and my protein was 150. And that's 7% uh, carbs, 60% fat, and 33% protein. Okay, so you're still pretty high in the protein. Yeah. Right? And, and from, we, a, from a, from a pa paleo, from a primal, whatever, keto. Yeah. But, I mean, it's like how you said, it's how you feel. And since switching and tracking like this, I went from that 9.1 to, um, in September as a seven, seven. And then in shoot, when I go back the end of October, just to kind of see how much had progressed. Cause I didn't start doing this until the first part of September. Um, I went from 9.1 to a seven, seven to a six, two by the end of October on my a one C. Sorry, did you say that you started keto at the beginning of September? Yes. I started well, I started keto mindset. I wouldn't call say I'm a true keto evangelist or anything like that, but I mean definitely very, very low carb, high fat, high protein. So 
And then just uh, to kind of circle back on that, do you find because you're heavy in a CrossFit and you have a big activity um, burden on your body that you feel better with the, the higher amount of protein? Or would you say that you've just kind of tracked it and that's just where you feel the best? That That's really where I feel the best. It's just based off the tracking. I, I usually range between uh, 115 to one. 50 115 to 150 on the protein and i'm usually between 100 and 125 on the fat and that's it just seems to work really well for me but grams whether um full grams of carbs or net grams of carbs i'm always way below 50 gotcha gotcha yeah and that's it's 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 when you're doing that explosive kind of work like a crossfit or a high impact training stuff. Um, I, I know personally, I only do that a couple times a week, but sometimes I, I do, I do feel better with a little bit more protein than I think probably the, what, what do you say, Jolene, the, the keto police would allow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, and, and I do as well too, right? So for a woman there, it's fairly low, um, which I, I attempted, but then I just wasn't feeling right. So I had to up mine as well. So Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So stepping back. So are, are you, are you then cleared now because, because you hit this, you hit drop the seven. Yeah. I hit the magic numbers. Um, Sweet. I, I, Congratulations. after about, thank you. After about two weeks, um, on, on this diet where I was tracking all my macros, I pulled myself off of my medication and I haven't taken a, a pill since the middle of September. And then by the end of October, my endocrinologist signed off on, my, on all my paperwork saying that I was back to uh, being able to maintain my diabetes with diet and exercise. And um, she uh, submitted that into the military for me, and I've been cleared. And the whole process for a medical board evaluation has been stopped. So, so did they also give you a card that you can do when you're like um, at – at the military so that you get a different food, different food when you go to the cafeteria? <laughs> no, no, but I, uh, I am definitely more picky and choosy on what goes on my plate if I have to go and eat military food, for sure. Like, um, if something is like, say they, the main course is Italian beef on a big hoagie or whatever, I pull that meat off and throw the bread away, that sort of thing, so... So with that, what, what do you think the biggest barriers are? Because you're still, I mean, you're, you're relatively new into this and you made some amazing changes in your health, but what'd you learn along the way? Um, honestly, and it, it's going to kind of sound gross, but I mean, my whole uh, digestive tract, like how much it would be affected by it all. I mean at first it's the constipation was like a huge issue. And I was like, Oh my God, what am I doing to myself? Why am I doing this? Um, but after my body adjusting to the diet, I, everything's flowing normal. So, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing I was kind of surprised by and uh, didn't expect, but I mean, my fiber intake probably dropped quite a bit by the cutting of all those carbs as well. So, so it sounds like you've been, or you're fairly new to this still. So do you have any plans of maybe experimenting with um, like intermittent fasting, long-term fasting? I have okay. started some um, I, I intermittent fasting on weekends just to see what would happen and how I feel. So um, like, for example, this past Saturday, I... Went to bed on Friday night, woke up Saturday morning, just had some uh, Bulletproof coffee and called it a day until about 1130. And I had no issues, no hunger. Um, everything was fine. My energy levels were high. Um, sometimes my wife's actually really surprised by how high my energy levels are because she, she doesn't think I eat enough. But, I mean, caloric intake shows that I do, so... I'm not too concerned about it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to experiment a little bit more with the intermittent fasting thing. Um, 
One thing I, I didn't mention yet, and I think it's kind of awesome, is since that September 1 day when I really started doing this to today, I've dropped 25 pounds. Wow. I, I went down from 225 to 200, so... Wow, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, definitely. So, have you have you thought about experimenting with upping your fat more? Um, I really, with as much as I'm taking in, I really don't know where. And I mean, this is again the newness of it all to me. But I don't know where I'm going to be able to find those fat sources at that I'm not already ingesting. If if that makes sense, John. No, I I, I know what you mean. I struggled I struggled with that for quite a while, and I ended up. Basically, the Bulletproof Coffee, I never got behind, but I definitely started to really leverage that MTC oil. I use it on, I pour it on vegetables and stuff. But I I, I have actually, I think at one point I was about that macro, I'm guessing I was around that macronutrient split. And over time, I actually did decrease my protein and increase my fat. So, But like you said, man, if you're tracking like that, you're better than me because I just, <laughs> I could not track like that and it just i just kept tweaking until i found what worked for me so keep at keep at it because as you as you become more fat adapted over time you've been doing it for a while longer you'll be surprised and you'll you'll find that me may be able to lower that protein and up that fat and feel even better so but yeah so so we got way down the way down the path of um i uh we never even got back to uh one of the original reasons why we had talked is you were talking about possibly like starting a blog or, or a yeah. podcast. And that's where I think Whitney was like, Hey, talk to my brother. He does a podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly where it started. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so the idea was brought up to either do a podcast or a blog from both my wife and your sister. Um, just kind of like telling my story and telling how much the diet changed everything medically for me. Um, <clears throat> and the biggest reason I started uh, going down that road to begin with is my wife came across this study out of the University of Indiana. 250 diabetics um, were put into this study. And by the end of it, it is a three-month trial period. By the end of it, all 250 were off their medication or had decreased their medication to like bare minimums. So like when they were first diagnosed. Some of them were on insulin and they dropped to just going back to an oral, oral prescription all by following a keto style diet. So that's really what pushed me to begin with. And, and yeah, um, just, I mean, I don't know much about blogging or podcasting, but I think what I've done in the time I've done it would be an amazing story for people to hear and possibly motivation for others to travel this path. Yeah, I mean that's really our motivation. I mean, I don't, I don't know if she told you, but we have, we both have daytime jobs, and we just do this out of our discretionary time because we just want to share our experiences. And um, let's see, Jolene, what, what what would you say? Did, would you call us a? Would you call our website a blog? It technically is by all means, but really, I think it's, we went more of the podcast route, and then later added some web content. Is that yeah? Is that a fair assessment? Yep. And uh, I would say our missions then are, or, or, or I guess our, or whatever, you know, our, what we're trying to accomplish aligns. So do you, do, you, do you ever think about interviewing like, like what we're doing here? Or you just always thought about just sharing your uh, like studies like that? Well, I, I've honestly never really thought too much into it beyond your, your conversations with me. Um, and that initial conversation with your sister, I didn't know where to start, what to do. So I thought this would be a good starting point would be talking with you guys on your podcast and maybe making the um, steps after that necessary to do my own thing. And whether it be interviews or or um, an actual written blog, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to go. All right. Well, what would you what would you advice you would give him? Uh, bl blogging, you want to, you, you definitely have to, sp you spend a ton more time editing than you ever thought you would, but <laughs> on, uh, on interviewing, it's just like, 
uh, we just said we're gonna we're gonna set aside this amount of time. We're gonna get together and we're just gonna talk about our experiences. And for some reason, that seems so much better. Just uh, doing the blog post and links on Facebook and all that stuff is where I kind of fall down because it's all that <laughs> blogging work. She's got to pick up the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, keep me keep me solid but we could definitely i mean we both we both have spent some time kind of learning and tips and tricks and for work uh we record sometimes other lunch and learns and and uh put them on the feed not necessarily in this show but um other shows underneath uh the umbrella there um at work so yeah we definitely if you decide you want to do it we could definitely uh help nudge you in the right position <laughs> that sounds good yeah so if you were going to start a blog or podcast, what what kind of actions are you going to give your your uh, your your members or your listeners? Are you going to like hey, John, what would you, you what me? would you give what would you give them uh, what would you give them for like uh, like getting started? Like what was your what would be your f- top five tips to get get going with keto? I'm sorry, you cut out halfway through that. I only got the very last of it. Oh well. So if if you started a sh- if you started a blog or a show, what would you what advice would you give people who are just starting out? Okay. Um, number one, it's not as overwhelming and as scary as it seems. So um, dive in wholeheartedly. Go after it. Um, track your macros if you have the capability of doing so, and if you can make it through the first, I'd say week, week and a half, cutting out those carbs, they don't, you never really want them again. Like my, my wife will uh, order a pizza for her and the kids now, and I'll eat the cheese and meat off of it and leave the bread lay there now. So, and I'm never really hungry for that sort of thing. It, I think we've been lied to all our entire life that saying, we need carbs. We need carbs. Even my nutritionist at the endocrinologist told me I need to be around 300 grams of carbs a day. And I went to that for about a week and it made my blood sugar skyrocket. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not hard to do. You just have to stick through it. And once you get past that first week, week and a half, you're not hungry anymore. You don't want the carbs anymore. So, that's probably, I mean, I don't have five tips, but probably top three right there. No, that's, yeah, that's, that is great. So it's not as hard as you think. Cutting out the carbs, you said how long um, it did it take you before it, you didn't miss them? It was really as quick as a week and a half, probably, I, I would say. And the only thing that I really that made me crave them was smelling them. Like if I smelled fresh cooked French fries or baking bread, that would make me kind of salivate and want something. But, um, once that week and a half passed where my body started adjusting to everything and I, I just didn't crave them anymore. Like I don't, I don't really want them. So have you ever thought about, um, not counseling. What's it called? Uh, coaching. Coaching. Since you're well, since you're a CrossFit kind of guy, that seems like it would align. You'd be doing zone. Yeah, diet. I th- I think it, it that's something right up my alley. I don't I don't know if I'll have time for that, but I mean, I I would like to go down that avenue at some point. Maybe when I retire from the military. But um, fitness have, has been a passion of mine for a long time, and that's why I got into CrossFit to begin with. And and got my certification to teach in diet coaching along these lines would probably be the next step. I mean, there are um, people who within the CrossFit community also teach nutritional guidelines and this could be my piece of the pie within that community. So there's definitely an avenue there. Well, fantastic. Well, I, I, I appreciate you sharing your story. I think that, uh, you know, we'll definitely, uh, you know, give, give people 
uh, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't say hope because that sounds sounds kind of negative. But hearing other people's experiences and how it's changed their health is 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 definitely you know I think something that really makes people realize that they they can change their health more than they probably think, uh, and and it's so much better than like you said popping pills. Oh uh, yeah, you can't you can control a diet. So I appreciate you taking the time. Is there is there anything that you'd like to add that we haven't covered? Um, well, I got a, a little kind of bonus tidbit for you guys. Um, after going on the diet and and kind of taking control of my life again, my mother, who has rheumatoid arthritis, also read and did research on keto and found benefits to help inflammation. And so she has, for about a month now, been uh, eating a keto style diet and she has uh, reduced inflammation throughout her body. And she, I think has only had one flare up this past month from her rheumatoid arthritis. Um, also reducing medication. She hasn't completely got off of it, but she has reduced medication. So uh, there's huge benefits by switching to a diet like this, both for diabetics and for other reasons such as uh, arthritis. <clears throat> That's that's awesome. All right, so I got a challenge for you. I don't know if you're going to do a blog or maybe a couple more interviews or maybe you can even do a fitness style class. Uh, we've got some web-based training stuff we do too, but you've got to do something. Yeah, I can <laughs> I can hear the passion. So so tune in. What do you need? A month, two months? I guess we're coming up on Christmas. So yeah, probably tune, after tune Christmas. in in about two months, and we, we want to know um, what you're going to do to kind of tell your your story and how you're going to paint that picture. So we'll, we'll help you the best we can, whether it be promotion or if you want to uh, record some – just record you and your mother's experiences – and how and how it impacted her arthritis that that would be uh you know we'd be happy to to you know put that on the podcast uh put put that out there for everyone to hear also so all right so again good. it's totally totally appreciated and yeah so keith first i want to say thank you for your service in the military um, it is my honor it's uh always a pleasure to talk to somebody who is willing to do that for us so thank you for that and kudos to you on your health and your mom. That it, it, That is absolutely amazing. And it's truly an inspiration to hear stories like this um, for other people who are struggling with those same things, um, especially somebody like you who, you know, you would have never guessed. You, you weren't overweight. You didn't look unhealthy. Um, but to just know that you had some health issues and that this was able to help you, it's, it's a true inspiration. So... Thank you again for allowing us to interview you. And yeah, both of you, thanks for having me. So yeah, we definitely want to keep in touch with you and keep track of you and see how your journey is going. So, um, okay. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Ketonian Corner.